Hello, my name is Amit Regev. I'm from Israel. I'm a mechanical engineer. I was studying mechanical engineering in Ben Gurion in Israel. Kolugo is an Israeli company. I'm the founder and the CTO of Kolugo Systems. Kolugo is a, a very is developing a very very unique uh, VTOL aircraft, which is a uh, different and in a game changing VTOL aircraft and drones in the aviation industry. We are we are already uh, uh, in the middle because we are already founded. We we, we sell aircraft. We uh, gain money for ourselves. We we are uh, self self made. You know we we're selling uh, airplanes. And we mm -hmm. and we live from it. Uh, I'm an aeronaut since I was uh, 14 years old. I was uh, building and flying uh, RC aircraft and uh, RC models and model uh, uh, aviation uh, aviators. Since I'm in the UAV industry industry for more than uh, 25 years, 2009, I was starting to uh, build my own multicopters when there was no multicopters to buy. I just uh, bought on the internet all the parts, the motors, the controllers, and built built my own multi rotors on my garage. Since the beginning, I was understanding very fast that the problems of the multi rotors is that they can the endurance. The batteries are not was not good enough, so I could fly only for 15 minutes. So as an aviator, I understand that combining multi rotors with wings can give me more best results uh, in the endurance. So in 2013, I was uh, building the first prototype uh, of the Kalugo in my garage as well. And it's continued to develop. And I understood that, uh, that the wings are great for uh, flying forward, but when you're hovering with wings, then the problems uh, start to be uh, uh, bigger. Uh, on 2016, uh, we got a, a fund from the Israeli chief scientist in Israel, the first fund, and we uh, opened uh, uh, Kolugo. We found Kolugo on 2016. Today, uh, we already signed uh, about four patents, and our aircraft, which is already operational, is flying for uh, more, uh, thousands of hours uh, very successfully. Today we, we are selling our aircrafts and uh, drones to the Israeli police, uh, Israeli fire department. We also have uh, joint ventures with a couple of companies. One of them is Migal, which is a agriculture research institute for uh, which is dealing with the precision agriculture. And we are uh, monitoring, for example, uh, avocado plants uh, for better uh, results and, um, and better uh, study of of this uh, plant we also have uh, uh, pilots with the uh, uh, inspection for inspection of uh, oil rig oil uh, tubes and so on we participate in uh, in some contest uh, two of them you can see here is the uh, dod department of defense ccdso we won the second place uh, the other one is from the Horizon 2020. We got the seal of excellence. The Horizon 2020 is uh, uh, the European Union uh, trying to improve uh, science and and, uh, and give funds to companies to developing uh, new technologies. Well, the the main problem with the with the drone multicopters today is that uh, is the endurance, as I said before, and uh, the speed. Most of the multi-rotors, uh, when they hovering for one hour, but when they have to fly forward, the time reduced to, to 20 minutes to half an hour, and they can fly for a distance of, of only uh, 10 to 20 kilometers. The, the other parts are the, the VTOLs, which are quite uh, new today. They fly very well, but on wind of 20 meters per second, they cannot fly anymore because they are not stable enough. Well, our innovation, as you can see here, is an adaptive wing. The wing is, is connected to the multi-rotor on an axial, and it can uh, rotate uh, freely around it. Okay, today, today we have uh, two main uh, 
aircraft. We have the helicopter and we have the airplane. None of them is good, is good enough. This is why they both exist. The airplane, they fly very good, they are very efficient and, uh, and quite uh, cheap to maintain. The problem is that you need, you need the runway to take off and land. This is why it cannot be used uh, in mass scale for everyone, which creates a bottleneck and it's, it's, uh, it's make it very hard to, to use uh, commercially. And uh, the helicopter, for, and on the other end, is, uh, is can take off and land vertically. The helicopter, on the other hand, is very complex. It's very expensive to maintain. It's uh, inefficient. And uh, and the only and the only thing is good at it can take off and land vertically. Both of them uh, are not good enough to to be uh, very popular and to do common use for everyone. We invented uh, an aircraft, which is a multi-rotor with an with a adaptive wing. The wing can rotate uh, freely around an actual connect to the multi-rotor. In, in this way, we can take off and land vertically, even in windy conditions. And when flying forward, the wing creates lift and then it becomes very efficient. This aircraft is also uh, uh, very reliable because it's got only bearings which can uh, get wrong um, and the maintenance is very cheap and uh, and easy as you can see here this is uh, the how, how is how is the aircraft is coping with the wind if the wind is coming from forward from the from the nose then the wings are going back and start to create lift if it's from the rear side they just flip to the other side and uh, by that, the aircraft is still can still hover very, uh, very uh, precisely above the ground, even in very, very strong winds. Here's a video of, of, of how it flies. It takes off, take off by the four motors, and then the mo rear motor starts to work, and the wind starts to uh, rotate and start to create lift. Here's a demonstration in a wind of 25 knots. You can see that it's, it's still very stabilized even when the aircraft is rotating. This is very important because, because if you want to do a recovery, so uh, it's, it's very important to land on a precise launching pad. Here's a transition and landing. Again, landing on 25 knots. The wind speed is 25 knots, yes. You can see in the background that the wind is very strong, but the, the aircraft is still very stable. If you want to land on a launching pad and charge the batteries again, this is very important. Okay, as I said before, having, having wings is very good for flying forward, but when you're hovering, it's a different story. The wings are an obstacle and they, are, became, they became a, a, a sail and uh, it's influenced very, very badly on the, on the hovering stability. And in the, in the good way, you land not on the spot you want, but in the worst case, it can uh, cause a crash. As you can see here, this is the V22. This is uh, one of the, the, not the only, but the very popular uh, VTOL aircraft exists today. It, it flies only in militaries because it's very, very complex and very expensive to maintain. Uh, here you can see a, a crash that happened to, with this aircraft and the reports said that it's, uh, it, because, it happens because of uh, tail wings of just 70 knots, which is not very, very strong wind for uh, this kind of aircraft. By the way, the United States president is not allowed to fly on this aircraft. And in the beginning, they used to call them, uh, they used to call them uh, widow makers. Widow makers because many pilots died 
uh, while uh, developing these aircraft. Today, Ecologo have uh, uh, three three models. Uh, one is for a, a payload of one kilogram. The other, the other one is 2.5 kilograms, and the bigger one is for five kilograms and can and will fly about uh, three hours and more. Uh, today, the main one is number two. Is uh, can take 2.5 kilograms, total weight of 9.5. And uh, this is the operational uh, model, which is already done thousands of flights. Well, to, the applications, uh, the application today we're using uh, mainly for mapping, but there are many, many more. For example, uh, inspection of uh, oil, oil pipes and gas pipes, inspection of uh, electric grid, uh, railway, and uh, autonomous uh, patrol for all kinds of uh, cities and uh, factories. Uh, we can also do uh, image processing uh, and AI analyze. So uh, if you have an intruder, it can, uh, it can decide for itself what to do, if to uh, call the police or uh, alert or even uh, take care of it itself. We, the, other, uh, the other applications are precision agriculture, construction, um, security, law enforcement, for example, uh, of course, and so on. Well, Kaluga is a game changer because uh, like other, uh, other VTOLs, it can fly for, uh, for two hours. But the problem is that, that above nine knots, the other VTOLs cannot be uh, commercial since they cannot operate autonomously. In order to, to operate autonomously, the aircraft have to land on the launching pad and charge itself and then continue to the next mission. If you cannot land, precise on the launching pad, then it's not autonomous anymore. There's a person have to come and put it back on the launching pad. So uh, we can do it in, in about uh, 25 knots wind easily. As, uh, as I said before, the multi-rotors, they fly for short uh, endurance and, uh, and very, uh, and quite slow. In the future, our dream is about uh, urban air mobility. We dream that people would be able to, to fly from one part to another in much faster and an easy way. Today, the urban uh, cities are very crowded and it's impossible to move by car. And it's getting even worse in the future. So moving, uh, moving in three dimension, it's very realistic. And we already already done a calculation and it's possible to do it in the next five, to 10 years. Today, uh, many companies are trying to do it, but it's not, it's not only for moving people, it's also for a logistic purpose to moving loads from one part to the other part of the cities or even further away from it. And uh, the dream is, is quite, quite possible and it's right, it can be here in five to 10 years. And, uh, and instead of, uh, of runways, of asphalt for a road, there will be everything will be greener, so we can take off uh, vertically and move to the three dimension. The cities will be look totally different than they are looking today. Today there are many companies which are uh, developing this kind of aircraft. The only thing changed is that they are electric. Twenty years ago the concept uh, didn't change too much, and uh, and they were not very successful. Well, this is a, a summary of, of our uh, adaptive wing advantages. Especially in urban, uh, urban conditions, the wings are very turbulent. Since you have many buildings, the wind can change very fast the direction and the, and the speed. This is why our adaptive wing is very good to adapt and to, to uh, make, it, make it land very precisely and very safely on, on helipads, on uh, building tops, and so on. The other advantage is that it, the smooth transition. We can do transition in very, very low altitude of about half a meter, we already start to flying forward. Unlike other VTOLs, which have to, to have a, a safe altitude in order to, to do the transition to an airplane. Uh, this is also, uh, this is also a save a lot of energy because 
the hovering part is very, very electric consumption. Uh, it spend a lot of energy. Uh, as also, it's very reliable compared to other vehicles, which is all kind of changing motors and stuff and so on. Ours have a very, very simple mechanism, only bearings, which make it very reliable and cheaper to maintain. Another nice advantage is the, the aircraft it is uh, taking off, is climbing and descending in zero pitch, in, in the same pitch as it, as it starts. Not like other, other aircraft, which has like plus uh, 20 or minus 15 uh, pitch. So it's very convenient to the people or passengers and uh, also for cameras or whatever is on the aircraft. This is, a, this is the calculated performance for the ARC one ton. We predict that it will fly about uh, 90 minutes and will take about 200 kilograms, which, which is uh, more, more like, like uh, two, two people and for about a speed of 100 kilometers per, per hour. Well, this is uh, our team. We are about uh, 15, 14 people today and uh, keep on growing. Thank you for, for listening to me. Uh, you can uh, enter our site and see more details. Thank you very much and have a great, great day. Um, I was in Korea about uh, two years ago in an Israeli delegation uh, from the UAV industry. It uh, was organized by the uh, chief scientist of Israel from the innovation uh, department by a, a joint venture of uh, of a company, a company, a group called Coril, is the Korean and Israel uh, joint venture. Uh, we were looking for a joint venture with other Korean uh, uh, companies in order to to build a better uh, uh, better technology. Uh, we will be ha very happy to to have a joint venture like that. We could not find it uh, back then. Uh, even though it was very, very interesting uh, to know uh, Korea and Koreans, uh, we had a very, very great time uh, back then. And thank you very much for the hospitality, warm hospitality uh, in Korea. Kansamida, Yorodun.